All right, hello again. So today we're going to be turning chloroplatonic acid into the platinum oxide. And this reaction isn't that easy to do. Surprisingly, because uh, platinum is quite far down, it's um, just past gold in the periodic table. So the chemistry is a bit different. So it's not as straightforward as say, uh, you know, like doing this from, from copper. So this is platinum dioxide and um, this sort of material is a good starting point for uh, making sort of catalytic platinum for uh, reductions and that sort of thing. So I thought this video had a wider interest because um, if you wanted to do catalytic reductions, that sort of thing, instead of buying outright the catalytic um, platinum or anything like that, like platinum black or something like that, or platinum on carbon or something, chloroplatonic acid tends to be the uh, chemical that you buy from suppliers. So the first property of platinum, uh, an important property, is that it is quite expensive. I have one gram here in this uh, cute little plastic vial. I bought a gram and a half of it um, off uh, Chinese Alibaba or something like that. I bought it through um, Aussie Chemist, so thanks for shout out to Aussie Chemist for uh, making that deal happen. Um, <laughs> I can't remember how, how much it cost me. I think this one gram was about $50 or so. So, you know, it's expensive, but it's not prohibitively so. Um, and that's because, uh, you know, Platinum only makes up a, a you know a mild percentage of this. It's not it's not pure platinum or something like that. Now, chloroplatonic acid is very very hygroscopic. So as soon as I break it out of this container, which to be honest I don't actually know how to do deliquescent or whatever the the, the level up from hygroscopic is, it'll um, quickly pull water and, and go into solution. So so I'm going to go ahead and use this whole gram um, in this synthesis because as soon as I crack open this vial, um, it'll you know. It'll form a solution anyway. I'll have to dissolve the rest up if I want to store it. So, might as well go ahead and use the whole gram, whatever. If everything goes to shit, then um, we can always recover the platinum. That's not too hard. So, we're not going to actually um, use up the platinum in a sense. The reason I want the platinum oxide is actually a completely different reason. Um, on my main channel, I'm trying to make a main channel video um, about some explosive platinum. Um, things and and the current synthetic pathway that I was doing wasn't working so I'm gonna have to try and go from platinum oxide so that's why I, I have the platinum and why we're going to be making the platinum oxide today hopefully that works and um, I don't have to explain it in this video but I'll have another video where that where it all works but um, <laughs> I thought this video would be interesting in isolation anyway yeah so our reactant for this is pretty basic here we have uh, 10 grams of potassium nitrate and we're just gonna put uh, one gram of chloroplatonic acid with the 10 grams of potassium nitrate and heat the ever-living shit out of it until we get our nice platinum oxide um, which we can then um, you know wash away all the soluble impurities from. Sounds easy but it might practically be hard because the temperatures are quite high but that's okay we're, we're trusting in our glass um, beaker here hopefully it's okay um, I would prefer to do it in metal, um, something like this, but um, I think the chlorobotonic acid will react with the, um, the hot metal and, and as well as the platinum dioxide maybe will get reduced by the hot metal. So we're, we're having just trust in the glass here. So our first challenge is to try and get our reactant out of this strange plastic ampule here. Alright, our lumps of uh, platinum are in there. Uh, you can see them pulling that water pretty quickly. You may be wondering why I didn't grind them together, and that's because it's very hygroscopic. And because there's already water in there and water's not a detriment to this reaction, what we're going to do instead is just add a splash of water to the reaction, and that should mix them together when it gets evaporated to dryness. There is our $50 slurry. <laughs> That's perfect. All right, we'll get that heating now.
All right, my hot plate isn't that hot. Um, we need it to get to about 500, and uh, my hot plate gets really to a maximum of about 340 degrees, so it says, which uh, just is below, well, I mean, theoretically, it's at the melting point of potassium nitrate, which is at like 330, but um, we're not quite gonna get there with this setup. So um, we're gonna have to go over to the, the gas burner. Alright, it's been quite a while. Um, it's been a while because I, I've struggled to really get the temperature up to an acceptable level. It really should be 500 to 550. And I was really thinking I could do it with this, but in this setup, it's been really unfortunate. I haven't been able to uh, really get those temperatures. It's been on absolute full blast. Well, I think we've used up a bit of gas, so it, it was the flames were a bit more aggressive when we um, had more gas in there. And the temperature is still only... Yeah, it's dropped to to 380 but when the flame was on, on full blast we got up to about 460 we never managed to crack the 500 mark so hopefully this is enough so occasionally it still kind of bubbles away but it was a lot more aggressive so the bubbling has definitely tailed off which is a good sign that we've managed to at least push the reaction somewhat all right and then um, we'll come back when everything is cooled down all right, so the mix has cooled down now, and I know that because it's been sitting here for about three and a half weeks. <laughs> so uh, yeah, fairly confident that it's uh, cooled down to room temperature by now. Good news and bad news. The bad news is that uh, we actually did manage to smash the beaker. Uh, which is why it's in another beaker. Oh, let's get a look at it underneath there. Yeah, see that's all smashed, but you know, what can you expect from you know, Bomex, <laughs> you know, they're cheap Chinese speakers. The good news is that we didn't lose any product. The other good news is that uh, over the three and a half weeks, it hasn't absorbed any moisture. Chloroaeric acid is so hygroscopic that even though it's such, it's a low mass percentage in this, if there was any remaining, we'd expect it to pull some water from the air and form like little puddles or something in this mixture. And there's none of that. It's just a solid unchanged mass. So uh, we've managed to reduce it all down to chloro, um, what are we doing? Platinum oxide, sorry, it's been so many bloody weeks that I've forgotten what the project is. The reason it was so crucial that we got the temperature up to a high enough temperature, like close to 500, which I'm not sure we have, is that the reference says if we get the temperature too low, the platinum oxide forms a colloidal susp suspension. Wow, I stumbled over those words, I'll try again. Colloidal suspension. What that means is that means that the, uh, the particles of the platinum oxide are so tiny that they remain suspended in solution and it effectively acts as a solution rather than a suspension of solids in a liquid so we can't filter out the solids because they're that that tiny and they don't settle so that would be very bad and also we got to try and extract it from this cake without breaking the glass even more and because then we'll end up with glass shards in our final product which is never a great idea All right, it's looking very good actually. I was a bit worried, but um, it's looking very good. So I just heated it up to try and get it all dissolved and um, all the uh, all the cake has broken up. You can see it's settling there, so so it's not it's not colloidal. Then filter, wash with a little ice cold water and dry thoroughly on the pump. And here's our final product. It's 334 milligrams of uh, fine dry powder that's uh, completely non hygroscopic I guess the final thing to do in this video is to uh, just dissolve some in some sulfuric acid just to show you that it's not actually the metal.
All right, that was meant to be the final shot of the video. It was gonna dissolve in the acid, everything was gonna be good. But it didn't dissolve in the acids at all. Uh, it just formed a suspension, and that's in both sulfuric and nitric acid, which leads me to believe it's not the <laughs> not platinum oxide at all. It's potassium hexochloroplatonic acid is quite insoluble in water at about 800 milligrams per 100 mils, which um, works out that uh, most of it has dissolved in the liquid that we have there, but um, a little bit has remained. So what we have isn't actually platinum oxide, it's just the potassium salt of the um, chloroplatonic acid, which is uh, very annoying. But what we can do is we can take this and heat it with the some more potassium nitrate and see if we can form the oxide that way. I'm fucking fed up with this. All right, it's cooled down. Naturally, it's uh, shattered the test tube. I think it's because the mix is molten and then it solidifies and expands and that is what smashes the glass as it's cooling. I think it's a combination of going down from such high temperatures and also that crystallization of all that potassium nitrate at the bottom there. Have we actually heated this hot enough? Well, we could see it go a different, slightly different color, slightly more brown, which is good. Is it enough? I don't know. But the thing is, we can't heat it in this test tube anymore because it's smashed anyway. All right, so I've just uh, refiltered off our platinum oxide, well, proposed platinum oxide. I had a chat with my Discord about, about this, and Oliver from the Discord group very helpfully pointed out that uh, my test of reacting the oxide with sulfuric acid to determine that it's an oxide doesn't actually work for platinum oxide, <laughs> um, which is annoying on a couple fronts. The first reason it's annoying is the fact that I probably didn't have to remelt it with potassium nitrate again it probably worked fine the first time and second of all the reason I wanted to make this chemical in the first place the platinum oxide was because I wanted to react it with sulfuric acid to form platinum sulfate as per a very old paper I guess that's what I get for just blindly trusting a very old paper without doing any other background research around it so so we still need to confirm that we have platinum oxide here and so we can do that two ways I reckon so the first way is if we react it with hydrochloric acid I expect it to have a reaction with that particular acid because I expect the chlorides to then coordinate back to the platinum and bring it back to uh, chloroplatonic acid. And then the other reaction is turning platinum oxide into the platinum black catalyst. I've seen a reference where we can put hydrogen through an aqueous suspension of it, and I think that would work, but it, that's a bit confusing, and then I've got to set up a hydrogen generator and blah, blah, blah. So I might try and do it a slightly different way, and that is that I've got some zinc metal here. If I just have an acidified suspension of the platinum oxide, and then I add the zinc metal directly to that, generating the hydrogen, we might see the reduction happen there. So I'm not sure this is gonna work. <laughs> All right, that worked beautifully. We can see the platinum is in quite big lumps, but that's because the uh, platinum oxide was quite um, big lumps originally. So I think if you were actually using this as a, uh, a reduction catalyst, you'd probably want to grind up the oxide first, just to make sure it wasn't clumped too much. I'm fairly sure this can be used as an alternative for stuff like palladium on carbon, platinum on carbon, and that sort of reducing agents. They're all slightly different, and they'll have slightly different selectivity, stereo selectivity, and uh, poisoning, and, and that sort of thing. But generally, I think they'd be relatively interchangeable. The problem is it's exceedingly expensive. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and hopefully, uh, I can find a way around the platinum issue, platinum not reacting with sulfuric acid issue for the other video. That's fine. <laughs> I'll work it out. She'll be right.